Hello and welcome to the second Back to the Feature podcast. Uh, we're really excited to be doing this again. Uh, today we want to talk about the summer movie season. Uh, by the time this episode comes out of the podcast, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy will have already hit theaters. Audiences will have absorbed it into their eyeballs and thus keeping it in their brains forever. Well, the happy, happy Marvel sugar just <laughs> slides on down our brain gullets. But uh, before we get to that, we figured we would kind of do a bit of a overview and a the things that we're excited about, maybe not so excited about, that are coming up for the summer. So it's just, it's a summer slate primer today on Back to the Future, looking forward into the future. I am obviously sitting here with John Vandaloo. How's it going, guys? Uh, my hetero life mate and also movie fan and critic friend. So it's going to be a lot of fun talking about all the different ones that are coming out. Oh, yeah. And there's plenty to be excited about. For sure. Obviously, Guardians. Uh, and I'm excited about Guardians right off the bat. And I think that's it's so funny because you know it's May 5th and it's kind of already the beginning of the blockbuster season, which yeah. it just feels yeah. like it's just become earlier and earlier. Yeah, it's crazy. Just getting right into it. I'm excited for Guardians quite a bit. Uh, still haven't picked up my tickets yet. I'm gonna have to go online and try and get some IMAX tickets. I had to. Uh, yeah, schedule. I'm I a little wanna... worried about places, uh, you know, selling out, which is to be expected for something like this. Yeah, I want to get mine ahead of time. Even around where we live, it's it's. I think Guardians is such a big movie. I, I think it's one of those ones that could be in like you know the the number one movie this summer. But uh, you know, and then there's also King Arthur: Legend of the Sword. I mean, it's obviously one that's going to be a a big movie. Uh, what what do you <laughs> think about that one? <laughs> well, I'm starting to see the negative. Some of the early screenings coming out, one star mm. reviews and and this and that, which I mean, it's kind of like what we thought it would be. I'm just hoping yeah. that it's uh, like dumb fun. Like I, I just want to like have some fun with it. You know, I I guess for me, and that's my problem is that it looked like a movie that was gonna go for the dumb fun thing. And uh, you know, I like Guy Ritchie's early work, but I just don't really like the application of him to King Arthur. Um, and I think that. A sense. The more I see of this movie, the less I like it, and uh, and I definitely would like to have seen something more. Maybe you know, if you're gonna go fantasy, go high fantasy, you know. And I think that uh, Guy Ritchie just doesn't seem quite the fit for for that one. Um, and then of course, you know, another another big one is Alien Covenant. Oh yeah, can't wait. I can't. I yeah. I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait. Get Xenomorphs back on the screen. That's not Alien versus Predator. Well, and I'm also really interested to see the completion of his Prometheus, uh, you know, storyline. He's getting to finish what he started in Prometheus. This is really kind of going to be, I think, partially a sequel to it. Uh, you, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we saw totally. from the fo- the footage with David <laughs> going to the Engineer's Planet, which if you guys did not see. That preview uh, footage go on YouTube right now. Go watch it because it was it was excellent. Yeah, and that's what gorgeous. we are in store oh. for in in Alien Covenant or just at least those things coming to the story and coming to the Alien mythos. Uh, I really like the idea that they're all like they're uh, colonization party. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. they're like the organ trail of <laughs> yeah, the space. Alien uh, franchise. So I think it's gonna be really interesting to see that. I think it has a great cast as well. I'm really interested to see Danny McBride do something, like maybe a more on the dramatic side. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's something like Alien. <laughs> well, I, I, mean, I, I, I saw that. I was really surprised yeah, that Danny I mean, McBride well, Danny would be in most of the movie. Yeah, Danny McBride is, I mean, he's typecasted a lot. I know, mm-hmm. like, him, uh, you know. Comedians I'm, are all the time. Yeah, I think he, it's he, sad, the, way he, the way he is on screen, you just assume that's what he's like in real life, and it's not. It's actually, he's like completely the opposite. Yeah, I think everybody wants him to be Kenny Powers <laughs> in real life. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, and he's, but he's definitely, he's made bank off that persona uh, yeah. for and a he, long time. I mean, come on. The, 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 his, Big old titties! His, his entrance awesome. and This Is the End is, is like one of the greatest. <laughs> him like, and This Is moments. the End, period. I, yeah. He's kind of my favorite part, probably. I'll jerk off wherever I want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that. It's funny because Franco's in it, too. Uh, and then Catherine Waterson, who was just in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. She's yep, going to yep. be the lead in that, uh, you know. I, I, I'm really interested kind of like to see how this unfolds. This movie. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say it. I was gonna say it, but I didn't want to, because you know we have we had Elizabeth Shaw in Prometheus, which you know 
I don't think that they're definitely not trying to directly rip Ripley off. So I think that uh, uh, I think it's going to be its own thing. And she's definitely interesting for a lead, though. I really liked her in Fantastic Beasts. I, th- I thought of the new characters and stuff. She was honestly one of the better ones. Yeah. Uh, you know, even, but Dan Fogler was really good too. But um, but then of course there's there's some bad in there too. Snatched. I don't know if you've seen the trailers for the, that on the, television. The Amy Schumer. Yep. Yeah. No, I'm not really looking forward to that one. Probably not going to see that. I think. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm just not into Amy Schumer uh, at all. Well, when she when she says oh. my vagina, like I lose my mind. <laughs> It, yeah, I don't want to get in trouble by saying uh, anything much more well, about that. I don't think you should be getting in trouble just for criticizing something that's definitely worth criticizing. Oh, yeah, but the criticisms could get pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, I really, I'm not a fan of, of her uh, as a comedian. And uh, I, you know, I honestly didn't think Trainwreck was that bad, though. I, I thought it was actually pretty good. Yeah, but not because of her. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was the ensemble. I thought that overall, though, the the, the writing of that was pretty good. Uh, it had a good story behind the comedy, yeah, and yeah. I think that that's always. I thought important. it was uh, a decent movie too. And John Cena but this one doesn't look like it's gonna really be. Oh yeah, John Cena is <laughs> so funny, so funny in that. Movie. I look like Mark Wahlberg. Hey, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> yeah, he's he's he sh- he should do that more often. I really like him in comedy, and actually, he's got one coming out too right before. I mean, the original, the actual summer starts, but uh, the Wall. I'm interested in seeing the Wall. I don't know if you've seen the trailers for yeah, that. Yeah, I have seen the trailer. I mean, Aaron uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, fresh off of his uh, awesome performance in Nocturnal Animals. Now, yeah, I hope he's got some consistency because you know, he, in the beginning, I really loved him in Kick Ass. And then I thought that he kind of faltered in some of his choices. Godzilla was not a good outing for him. They didn't give him a lot to work with in, in that, but, you know, granted, he still didn't elevate it. So Yeah, yeah, he didn't elevate uh, it. And so I think that uh, I really liked him in Nocturnal Animals. I mean, not like liked him, like I'm not like, hey, that's a guy I like to hang out with. But I thought that he the performed. Actor. Yes, <laughs> not he the character. performed great. He was, he was uh, one of the best parts of that movie. For sure, and I thought that he did deserve. I think would he get the Golden Globe nod? He won the he, yeah, he won, he won the Golden, he won Globe, the Golden for Globe for it, but he didn't get a nom for. And he didn't win the Oscar, and he didn't get the nom for the Oscar. I thought that was fair. I thought that was fair because it's like okay, give him the Golden Globe. Yeah, it was a tough for that it was, kind it was, of a, a lot of good. That's tough. I don't think the Academy's gonna give it for some psycho. You know what I mean? They gave it to the Joker, but that guy's even kind of worse than the Joker, really. <clears throat> you know, at least comic book villains they do have a certain line that they don't it cross. Was, it was a great. And he line, cross though. he crosses every awful line in that film. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But uh, but yeah, the wall. I mean, it's directed by Doug Liman too. So. Yeah. Oh I mean, yeah. That's I think he's like, one of the better action directors we have. Right yeah, now. and that's the draw. I mean, for me wanting to go see that. And it looks honestly. like phone booth in Afghanistan. Yeah. And I'm really interested to see how that kind of plays out. I like movies like that sometimes. You know, where they're really small and it's just a few characters and it's just like cat and mouse kind of game. I think that that could be really interesting if they're able to kind of keep the adrenaline of that movie amped up. I think that could be a really cool, yeah. cool movie. I think Doug, Doug Lyman, guy to do it probably too. Um, but I, really, the, the real summer kickoff film is Baywatch. I mean, just yeah, on the calendar yeah, Baywatch. in spirit. Bay, what do you I think mean, about Baywatch so far? I, well, I'm gonna go see it. I, I mean, How many like, reasons? Are you, plenty of reasons. I mean, it's got at least it's two. Got, it's got Dwayne Johnson in it. At least two reasons, John. Zac Efron, Alexander Daddario. <laughs> yeah, what's well, the Two beautiful, beautiful reasons. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I think that whole cast is actually great. Yeah, it uh, looks it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Any movie that The Rock is in. All, all joking about her beautiful breasts aside, like I actually really like her as an actress too. So mm-hmm. I'm actually kind of excited that she's kind of in that lead role. She's in the lead female role. Zac Efron and kind of the in the foil to her, and then kind of you know you got Big Pop of the Rock overseeing all this stuff. I think yeah, it's gonna be a lot of be, fun. It's gonna be a summer party movie. I mean, it's just—it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, like Twenty One Jump Street, but on water. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think if it hits that Twenty One Jump Street vibe, I think that audiences are really gonna connect with it. I think it's gonna make a lot of money, probably. This. Oh, I'm this sure. Summer. Anything that has Dwayne Johnson attached to it makes a lot of money. What do they always say? I think on Collider, where they're always like, "Yeah, he's like a, a franchise Viagra." There you go. Get this thing stiffened yeah, back yeah. up. <laughs> Absolutely. <I'm> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. 
Uh, then after that, one I'm not really quite as excited for, Pirates 5. Yeah, I haven't really been Is a fan. Is it Dead Men Tell No Tales? Is that what it's called? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think so. I honestly well, I mean, guess. I was like, pirate catchphrase. I mean, Javier Bardem, though... Uh, is the villain in there? I, I'm actually curious in watching this one. I haven't watched any of the movies since the first. I've not been a fan of the Pirates movie, mm-hmm. but but I haven't really given them a chance either. No, so they were a nice thing to watch when I was younger as a family. You know, family adventure movies. Um, we obviously the first one is is a good film. I think overall, it's a good yeah like kids family adventure movie. You know, it, some people will try to make that movie something that it's not. I mean, they, they, they sort of fight to the beats of the song. Like, we kind of know what this is. You know what I mean? It's yeah, not anything yeah. to be taken that seriously. Johnny Depp is fantastic, and he's hilarious in the first one. And then starts to outstay his welcome in subsequent sequels. But yeah. I didn't see Stranger Tides. I was totally uninterested, because I thought the third one was really bad. Two, I thought it gets... It's okay-ish. It's passable. Uh, and then I think I hadn't seen the third one... I don't think I even saw that one in theaters. I think I saw that one in school. Like on some, like, Weird. like like That's the last strange. day of school where everyone's just like throwing parties in every classroom. Like, oh, we'll just watch Pir- the new Pirates movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, That yeah. happens. That happens. Oh, yeah, I'm not, yeah. my teachers were great teachers, guys. Okay, it's not why I'm sitting here doing podcasts now. It's because they didn't teach me and they showed me Pirates, the Caribbean movies. <laughs> they, they did a wonderful Same. job educating both of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but after that is one that I am the most excited for, even if the internet wants to tell us or not. But Wonder Woman, uh, on uh, on the second of June, I'm very excited for Wonder Woman. She um, was, I mean, easily or, or arguably, sure, uh, the best part of BVS. I think everybody unanimously was like, no matter what they thought, like you know, because I think Bat Batfleck's a little polarizing still too. Yeah, but, like, I would say that. Yeah, Wonder Woman. Everyone's like, yeah, but Wonder Woman was fucking cool. <laughs> Everyone yeah, was really I mean, good like, with Wonder got that Hans Zimmer written score there for that theme song mm-hmm. for her, which was great. Her arrival and and just the way uh, Gal Gadot like carries herself in that mm-hmm. role, it's exciting. I'm I'm really excited. This is this will be the first female led uh, superhero movie. And, yeah, I mean that's just exciting. And this is well, like, the, that's not totally true though in that way. But I mean, like you know, they had a Catwoman movie. They've they've done it, Electra. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the, 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 those were bad <laughs> films. Now, yeah, I, fr- I, I mentally blocked those. I'm, I apologize. But I mean, she is the first the great three hero. fans that are out there. Like she's the greatest female hero. Yeah. Period. Like when you think of female superheroes, and she's, superheroes. Getting, and she's finally getting that film, and so. it looks so good. I love the setting. I love the World War One setting. Like all those shots of her, like going through like the the, the like the the, the uh, bunkers, the trenches, and stuff. Like just like just, like knocking grenades off her shield and stuff. Like. She's such a badass. Gal Gadot just knows how to like carry that character. And I think she's one of the best things about the new Justice League. Like for me, when I look at the Justice League, she's kind of like the Captain America of the team or something. You know what I mean? She's like the yeah. centerpiece right yeah. now. Like Batman, it's like, yeah, Batman can help a lot, but Batman's got limitations, he's a guy. Where like you see them like her come down and she's like, she's the leader. Like she is the head of the fucking Justice League, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it'll be so exciting to see when Superman comes back and the dynamics. Chris Pine too, like totally. <laughs> and we saw and Steve the, Trevor too. Yeah, like, as the, like the trailers have shown, like and and some of the early early screenings of people saying Chris mm-hmm. Pine is is excellent, is awesome. Oh yeah, like, I think he's great even in the trailers. <laughs> I think he's gonna really because as much as I really love the physicality Gal Gadot brings to Wonder Woman, I think that. We need to see more of her as a character. We need to see some more of her personality. And this is movie's going to flesh that out. And, uh, you know, she carries herself really well, but it'll be nice to see some more heavy lifting. Maybe some range, yeah. yeah. Which hopefully she can deliver on. I know some people are worried. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, I mean, her... Small sample size, and I yes, totally get it. Yep, but I, the way she looks when she's fighting, I just she just looks great. As Wonder Woman, so I am yeah. really excited for that. I'm no really fanboys excited. didn't like her look at first, but like I said, she carries herself like a really like like a warrior and yeah. like a fighter. So uh, and I think that's important. I think with like these superhero movies, these people look look like looking like they can do this stuff. Um, and then after that, uh, we're gonna get a the first entry of a new cinematic universe that's gonna be hitting. Uh, theaters, and that is the Universal Monsters universe. 
starting with the mummy. Um, now this one, I have thoughts about this one so far. I want you to start though. <laughs> Um, you know, <laughs> I'm not expecting much, so I have, like, really low expectations for it. Good. Um, I think, you know, for the most part, anything Tom Cruise gets his hands on, he usually uh, delivers an entertaining movie. Mm -hmm. um, Jack Reacher 2, though, I thought was atrocious, uh, which is kind of sad, because I really liked the first one. Uh, but, you know, so hopefully the trend isn't going that way, and that this isn't just some easy paycheck for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jack Reacher 2s aren't typical for him. He doesn't do lots of sequels ever. Besides the Mission Impossible. Besides, so yeah, the end, I mean, the he has a franchise. Mission. I mean, yeah. every great movie star's got a franchise now. Especially now, you gotta yeah, have now. a franchise. It's gotta be like six, seven, eight movies. It can't be three Robert Denny Jr.'s got a couple or whatever, right? <laughs> How many franchises you got? But, um, no, The Mummy, I think you hit the nail on the head. Low expectations for that one. Yeah, you know. I, I don't know. It... it is it going to be some PG-13 action adventure? Maybe it'll deliver something. I don't know. I think I'm so... intrigued by it. I kind of want to know what happens in it. Oh, you know, yeah, like what the... I'm wondering is, like, because they, they keep seeing that he's, like, linked and stuff. Is he going to become the mummy? Or is she the mummy for the franchise, but she's evil? So, like, how is this franchise going to work? Yeah. Like, they're all, like, teaming up to do what? So, uh, you know, it's like, it, aren't they all supposed to be evil? It's like, it's fucking Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to help us. Like I don't, I don't know. I, just, yeah, I don't know. I don't. It doesn't pan out in my head. I, I, we've seen Russell the trailer. There. They got Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah, where he's like, "Welcome to Prodigium." Like we, the, we're the shield of this thing. You know what I mean? It's he, and I'm assuming then he'll have an accident where he becomes, uh, you know, Mister uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Yeah, Mr. Hyde. which that would that's I would be excited for that. Russell I think that would be a cool storyline to see Mr. unfold. Hyde, yeah. But it's like. I already see them winding that it's, up. It's it, it's, it's kind of yeah. hard to get excited when you already see them winding the shit up. Like yeah, I you know in it's, a trailer. It, it reminds me of like it, something on par with like World War Z. You know, Ugh. maybe. I I like World War Z. Quantum of Zombies. The Quantum of Zombies. <laughs> yeah, which that might that that is getting a sequel. With David Fincher too. So, yes, but see, like <laughs> when you say David Fincher, my mind does something. Very different than when you... Than Which, that totally caught me off guard. That's that's awesome. Fun. That's yeah. Not the, that's not this summer. I hope so. it's closer to the book. Yeah. Which, if David Finch is attached to it, you know, maybe... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's... <laughs> side trail from the, the Mummy. We'll just, we'll just talk about future projects uh, with David <laughs> Finch or they're unrelated. But yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I don't know. It... I, it's like, I see where we're going with this, and I'm like, I don't know where you're going with this. Yep. Just gotta wait and see. It's, uh, just gotta wait and see. Yeah. And it's funny, Universal a lot of Monsters. People, is... A lot of people are gonna be disappointed too, like uh, like normies that are going out expecting like the Brendan Fraser like fourth installment. Because I've heard people talking about that. Like, but oh yeah, time, I like the ninety. But, oh, like, I really when like I look at it, it's though, like that's not what it is. But at the same time, though, they're kind of taking that style. They've got her doing the sand faces. They got her doing like plague shit. Like that's not the fucking old like. Universal Monsters, like yeah, you do it in yeah, like true, toilet true. paper. Like they're definitely taking more of the influence from the more recent one. He's kind of being the he is kind of playing the the Brendan Fraser role. It looks like, but of course, there's gonna be a lot more running and a lot more of those types of Tom Cruise stunts. This it's gonna have more of a sensibility speak in the trailer, though. I mean, like the, the thing he does a really weird sounding yell. When oh I, yeah, yeah. Kidding. He, I think he does. I, I think he asks in the questions first, in the trailer. I watched. In our trailer reaction, I did not see. I don't remember him talking at I all. I think like like in the the whole time of the trailer, I think he asked like, "What is she?" Like, <laughs> like it's something. <laughs> Why am I not dead or something? Which you know, like the first, he asked a couple questions. Yeah, which in the first mummy he's doing like a neo. Well, the first two mummies. I know the second one is, you know, not as good as the first. <laughs> the first is kind of an like, kind of an awesome like. The first the first mummy is great. I, I, I really, really like. I, you know, like as a kid, man. I, that that, movie I was like ten when that movie came. It was out. always on at so TNT at yeah. every single barbecue. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Brendan Fraser carried that movie though. He's great. Man. I dressed up as him as for Halloween once. <laughs> I had the little, 
I had the little gun holsters, <laughs> oh, everything. I had oh, the little that's funny. The, the, the wristband where he hides his tattoo. I oh, liked that movie a lot when I was a kid when it first a, came out. It's a great. It's it's because the scarabs I thought were scary, but it was also funny and it had guns in it. It's scary. It is actually kind of it's it's ripe, I'll admit, it's ripe for a rewatch. I've I've watched the second one more times than people should watch the second yeah. one. Yeah, I liked the Mummy franchise at first. The third one though, unforgivable. Un for. <laughs> Giveable. And I, I oh, checked out. No. I checked out when the Yeti started get kicking. Field, oh, when they, when the, when the abominable snowmen started kicking field goals, I'm like, <laughs> I am, I'm done. I'm done. I gave up. Oh, I honestly now, I hope the new mummy has that. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Do you want the, the and then them, them like putting their hands up to score? Like, how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> Like I mean, there's all kinds of stupid shit going on, but like, how Roger they... Goodell will be really happy to know that we're they're getting that much reach. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's, it's hitting yeah. Yetis it's it, in the, 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 the Himalayas. Yeah. <laughs> the Nepalese Yetis, they're... <laughs> the Nepalese Yetis love football. Roger, the Goodell bot, but um, the the one that I'm excited though it comes uh, soon after the Mummy. I think it's the same week. But it comes at night. Yeah, it comes at night. Really excited for this. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, A24, or A24, however they want to say, the production company, I really love the kind of movies that they've been putting out. Uh, they've got a couple this summer that we're obviously excited for. They really, really they remind me a lot of, like, Blumhouse and, and A24 are putting out just fantastic movies, such unique movies, and it comes at night. Looks like it's going to be another great horror from what I think is becoming one of the greatest decades in horror of all for time. For sure. I would love to do just a podcast maybe on that. Guys, tell me in the comments if you'd love for us to do that. Maybe I would love October. for us to do that, so I'm going to get on there and comment for us. Because, yeah, I think <laughs> that we are in a renaissance of oh, some yep. of the greatest horror ever made. And I, I know the 70s and 80s are so, some of the greatest, like, is really considered to be, like, the greatest times for horror movies, but... Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean like, Get Out is legitimately, like, the biggest movie so far from this year. Like, what people are talking about, what's gaining steam with audiences and people everywhere. I yeah. hear everybody yeah. talks about Get Out. I'm and, glad I'm glad to see, like, Paranormal Activity is, like, no longer a thing. Oh, and, like, fucking thing. Like, God. that era of, like, just trash horror movies is mm. kind of starting to fade. I mean, like, obviously I'm, I'm glad that The Conjuring's got a nice little foothold for mainstream horror audiences. I know that there are people like that. They want some jump scares. They want some basic stuff like that. But... Yeah, because, I mean, we're getting an Insidious 4 now or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think And, that's and you're going to see, like, the animal 2 and there's like, the nun uh, Yeah, and I think that's, that's fine, happening. especially when they put it in the hands of a guy like James Wan, which is, like, he's the most, like, hard-working, like, horror director they <laughs> in a long time, since Wes Craven. It's like, he is always working on so much stuff, and I'm so excited to see his Aquaman, but, um, yeah. you know, I thought The Conjuring 2 last year was a great mainstream horror movie. I, I, I don't mind. I'll accept some of those as long as we keep getting things like what It Comes at Night looks like. Um, this looks like a really cerebral, well-thought-out horror movie that is tr great marketing. Because the, tra the teaser was, well, the poster, for the, the the initial poster they put out with just the dog staring into like the, the forest or whatever. Such a creepy thing, and it comes at night. I love the marketing for it. The first teaser trailer, they and, don't give anything away. And then the, 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 the trailer just released this week. Mm. It's... It's it's giving you a little bit, but not enough to like ruin anything at all. It's still very intrigued by it, and, and that has one of my personal favorite actors in there, Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton has been has been fantastic, and I love I love Joel Edgerton uh, in front of and behind the camera. Um, yeah, if you guys did gift. not see the gift, uh, you need to go out and see the gift. It's one so of the good, best movies uh, from uh, I think a couple years ago now, but. Um, he has just been fantastic. You didn't see him in Midnight Special as well. Go which I, watch which that. I didn't get around to seeing Loving either. I know. Uh, yeah. I, it's one that's still on my list to get to from last year. Some of year. those movies we, we miss. Which Je up here I love in Jeff the, in the Northwoods. Too, so I don't know why I've missed out on that one. Mm. But yeah, Joel Edgerton has been great. So I'm really excited for this. It, it just looks so creepy. It looks cerebral. I love like, the sound design, the editing that we're. We're kind of seeing in the in the trailer so far, and it looks like there's some really interesting social questions that are being brought up with the microcosm of these people in this house. And yeah. I know this news trailer kind of showed that it showed what's going on with the world and how it's influencing these people. And I think that you're going to see that this is another one that has deeper themes and meanings, which I think that people have forgotten that that's what horror used to be about. 
Um, and that's what real fear is about. Ideas really generate fear. Not just some scary dude in a mask or something that you can make a finite monster or killer. It's it's some of these ideas. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what we're seeing in these movies compared to what we used to see in the early 2000s and the 90s where horror was garbage. So it comes at night. That's so intriguing. I can't wait for that. But that's that's us. I mean, we're definitely much bigger horror fans than... Than a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So for us this summer, I think that's obviously a big one, but it's not yeah. probably going to make very much money. No, you know, but its budget was probably really small. So you know, I mean, Get Out was made on four and a half million, mm-hmm. and it went up to what one hundred fifty, two hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if they keep doing it like A twenty four and Bloomhouse, you know, those mm-hmm. we keep getting good movies, which I'm excited for. So, so. let's mm-hmm. let's try to get it back back to Main Street here. And uh, a win with a movie that I think, obviously, is probably going to do really, really well with audiences from a company that is famously really, really good at generating money, Pixar's Cars 3. Cars now, 3, yeah. it's going to make some money, because that's one of those ones you don't just sell one ticket, you sell two. Yep, or three. Or, four, or three. You know. I think that it's probably going to be a big one. I think people are really interested because of the that first trailer, which is kind of alluding to maybe a grittier or darker story uh, uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, seeing Lightning McQueen going full Ricky Bobby crash in the uh, in the trailer, um, or maybe even something like Rush. But I think that people are a little bit more interested. Cars 2 is kind of hailed as the worst Pixar movie ever. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I actually, so. I don't think I watched it. Uh, and I have kids, so that's uh, definitely... My brother uh, hides it from our nephews sometimes. Hides it. <laughs> Why are you just throw well, it away? Well, because they get they they well because they get they to pick the movie. It. Yeah, they get to pick the movie. It's the it's they're they're getting to pick it. So they want to watch Cars too. You know they're they're they're, they're little kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's fine. Set a little fire out in front. Yeah, but sometimes, like I said, when we're, we're, sometimes you give them a couple options we're to pick Cars two tonight. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like yes. <laughs> Gasoline um, and so a definitely match. Cars three though. It definitely has a lot to have to prove and to try to come back from. And I don't see Pixar trying to leave this franchise without a fight. It's kind of known as being like their yeah. lesser franchise. And, I mean, come on. These are the people that have emotionally crippled us in every single Toy Story film. And, like, the first five minutes of Up. Like, these guys, they, they know exactly where oh, your guys' uh, heartstrings are. I think they might be coming for you with Cars 3. It could, yeah, it could happen. And this is a f- uh, fun fact, and this came out on Movie Fights, mm-hmm. but... Car the Cars franchise has sold has sold more toys than like anything else besides Star Wars. My nephews have an entire trailer of the Cars toy like cars like the Hot Wheels like versions of the cars like they have all of them from the movies in this huge like tractor trailer thing. Well, kids they love them. They were obsessed with them for years. I don't think they play with them nearly as much now because they they're both getting a little older. They're six and four now, but before like yeah a couple of years ago. It's all about them cars, man. The kids love those those toy cars. It's crazy though that that franchise has sold more in merchandise. What well, used to be a Chevron than, commercial, basically, than anything besides Star Wars. I mean, I, you, you remember crazy. those commercials, right? The, those little Chevron commercials with the talking cars. Gosh, I. I mean, it they, was it was just like the cars from Cars. They would like you know tell little jokes and talk while they tried to sell I, gasoline. <laughs> and yeah, it's like the thing that like that idea started on. These commercials, you know, and then all of a sudden is now one of the, the biggest, uh, you know, Pixar properties that's out there. It's so, cra- yeah, it's crazy. That was a crazy fact. I definitely think that's a contender as far as what's going to bring in the most money. Well, yeah. I, I Even like last year, too, I, I didn't think Finding Dory was actually that great. It still yeah. made tons of money. I mean, they always do. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, because I mean the kids kids love them. And they're they're honestly though, even someone like Finding Dory, even though I think it's the best Pixar movie, it's still a lot better than a lot of things that kids could be watching. So That's true, yeah. Um and at least there's there's something going on in there. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of bigger ideas inside of even something like Finding Dory. They don't leave your kids with something just completely thoughtless. Yeah. So and that is that is nice. So it's like a, I'm sure as a parent, it's always nice to watch like a Pixar movie because there's actually something in there for you too, and and not just just the kids. Um, I think another one that's uh, I think really interesting and could be kind of a sleeper hit is All Eyes on Me, uh, the the Tupac uh, bi- bi- biography movie. Yeah. Uh, biopic. Yeah. 
Guy you know, looks, the guy looks the role. That's for sure. <laughs> Holy shit! Right. I uh, honestly thought that they had just perfected hologram technology a little better, <laughs> and they they get the the hologram there of Tupac back. Um, <laughs> or Tupac still alive? It's just him, you know. Oh, oh. go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but all eyes on me. I think that you know, with Straight Outta Compton, how successful that movie was, and how excellent that movie was. Movie, if you guys that didn't movie was see really that. Good. Um, you don't just have to like gangster rap. To go watch Straight Outta Compton and enjoy it. It is a fucking excellent movie. And I think that audiences remember that from the, a couple of years ago. I think that All Eyes on Me is going to have a big audience that it's going to play to now. Yeah, I'm and going to see I'm it. I'm going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, be sure. out, we'll be putting out a review for that. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, I think that it's it's kind of one of those ones that uh, I think that not everybody jumped right immediately on the Straight Outta Compton train. I thought that it was on the built steam. I think that All Eyes on Me will probably have a lot more success out of the gate than than Straight Outta Compton did because of that goodwill that, that was brought in that in that biopic. And I think that people do want to see this stuff. Um, of course, after that, one of the big contenders, one of the heavy hitters, one of the most explosive franchises... Ever, which is really more of a rickety bucket of bolts. Transformers Transformers 5. (laughs) Oh, the last night. I'm sorry. I can't even take that, like, title seriously. I can't either, because they have, like, 14 more movies planned already. Oh, gosh. So what you're saying is, John, is that I'm going to die and they're still going to be making Transformers movies? Yep, and Michael Bay is probably going to be directing them still. And his son will take over if he has one, or he'll make one. And then <laughs> it's just so, a never ending story. Of so, what you're telling me, John, is we trans- lost. We lost. We- <laughs> That's, that is exactly what I'm saying. Um, humanity mm. actually has failed. Suffered a loss. You know, you know what the thing is? This though? is literally just like the end of Cat's Cradle. The, like, I've, I'm a fan of Transformers. You know, like, Transformers. Like, I, I, I wanted them to be good. <laughs> I just want Optimus the Prime to be... The first one was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, but it's pretty good. It's um, pretty good. It my, was pretty Still, good. my biggest complaint, though, is Optimus Prime is, like, not a character. And uh, he, sh- he should be more than just a robot preaching. Yeah, but he's got like, that badass sword. You see that sword, John? Hey, you know, in the trailer, it looks promising. He, he chokes slam promising. Bumblebee. Yeah, I'm, mm. I'm, 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 I can't wait to see Optimus Prime kill some folks. Uh, even if he's brainwashed or whatever the hell they're doing now, but you know, four was terrible. It was trash. Uh, I, I didn't thought see it was it. <laughs> it was gar it was garbage, like repulsive garbage. I and saw it's like the honest trailer for it. Too. I saw the honest yeah, trailer for it, and I, see, and I it. yeah, I kind of felt like um, I got it. But I think they they did bring in a new writing team. Um, I can't remember all the names attached to it because I'm not really following it okay. that closely. But some of the writers have some accolades. I was. So, but but okay, so we got these new writers, as you're mentioning here. But yeah. they're bringing in, John. They're bringing in medieval shit. They're bringing in Winston Churchill, and they're bringing in Transformer Nazis. John, justify this. Why? I, oh. I I'm not going to sit here and justify anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I I plan on going to see it. Um, because for some reason I do this to myself every <laughs> every two years or whatever. The last time I went to a Transformers movie, it's because you drugged me there kicking and screaming. Actually, no, I didn't. Oh, yeah, the third one, you fell, <laughs> fell, <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> like, in the middle of the third act. Which, I think the last 45 which, minutes honestly, of that movie, I, I, I was, was like snoring. Yeah. Uh, actually, I didn't go see the fourth one in theaters. I rented it. I, I, I streamed it on Microsoft. A wise oh. choice. <laughs> and I... I, I watched it with my son, or tried to, and he, like, was not interested after, like, 40 minutes. <laughs> Jeez. Well, the I Romeo just... and Juliet law part broke through him for a loop. I mean, he sat through, <laughs> he, he's watched the first Jurassic Park, like, a hundred times. Well, you're, all and... you're saying is your your son has taste. John, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing. <laughs> it's like, well, he left the room, now what's my excuse for keeping this shit rolling? <laughs> It's only because I have to. Like, I need to get to the end because I need to formulate my own opinion on this. And oh, it was bad. I mean, you killed oh, T.J. Miller man. in the first like half hour. Like, the, best, <laughs> the best part of your, the best part of your movie. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Now we gotta go somewhere positive. For yeah. This. Now we gotta move on. Baby Driver. Baby Driver. Baby uh, Driver. You're right. I mean, come on. Now this is so interesting, though. I think because Baby Driver looks really different. 
Like, yeah. okay, like, we have an idea of an Edgar Wright movie. Let's it's going to have fantastic like editing and, and, like, great ensemble cast. Mm. It's going to have great action. But like I said, we, we, we think of the Coronado trilogy. We think of Simon Pegg. We think of Nick Frost. Like, we think of that pairing. We think of this cast and, and, and a type of movie. We think about, like, the satire. We think about comedy. Where this it looks like he is doing a straight-up crime movie that's going to have tons of personality. It's going to be quirky. It's going to be fun. But this thing is serious. The stakes are high. These people in this, this trailer, they don't know what they're playing. John Bernthal, that man never looks like he's fucking playing with no, every, no, anyone. No. It's a fucking Punisher. And Django. <laughs> and Don Draper. <laughs> in the back of his car with Radar Love playing. I am fucking in with this movie. It looks so fucking good. It does look really good. Uh, I'm super excited. I just can't. I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. I keep. I've seen the trailer like a dozen times now, and I just keep. Just like, come on, when is this? Come on, like I just need this to be in theaters now. Yeah, uh, I so think yeah, that it's, uh, it's, it's such an awesome curveball change of pace for Edgar Wright, and it looks just like he's just got exactly what he wants. Yep. I yeah. I can't wait to just see more and more mm. uh, coming from Edgar Wright too. It's Scott Pilgrim vs. the World too. I oh, mean, that's geez. such a great movie, and I and I actually recently watched that for my first time. Um, Eggs and milk, bitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love like the vegan. Police. I love the vegan police part. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Everything he does, mm. everything he touches, is great. So, uh, yeah, super excited for that. So another one is probably a contender, a big one for the kids. But uh, Despicable Me Three. Uh, I actually just watched the first Despicable Me movie uh, the other day, and besides having one of the most annoying villains I've ever watched in any movie, even for children. It was pretty good. I, I, I actually, I have kids and I still have yet to watch Despicable Me. I know they have with, uh, you know, my wife. Mm -hmm. But I... You were, yeah, you weren't there for that. I, I don't know me how either. I've missed Despicable Me because it's been played quite a few times. I think I just have such a repulsive, uh, you know, hatred for minions that I just avoid it. I know, and I know Despicable <laughs> Me. have it. Yeah. It's, it's a good movie, though. It's from what, I, from what I've gathered. Uh, the first two. The the first one is good. Um, oh I yeah, laughed, I, watched, I actually, laughed at the trailer I, I, quite a I bit. Watched, so I watched actually both of them. Now. Yeah, I just realized. Yeah, because we watched this pickle with me too the same day. That was for my nephew's birthday recently. Yeah, so I actually now I have watched both of them. I just realized I, I did, watched I, two movies that yeah. I haven't uh, put on any list. But the second one's actually better. Um, I really like the second one quite a bit. The villains way better, uh, and uh, they add some more elements to it. Um, and I think that, like, too, like, the movie Minions gives them a bad rap because it's all about the Minions and it sucks. When the Minions are in the movie Despicable Me, they're actually tolerable. They're actually semi-cute. Yeah, they're, they're, they don't outstay their welcome in a Despicable it's Me It's when films. they start making it to, like, Facebook uh, greeting cards and stuff that's where that's, I... That stuff is weird. Like, that's like your 40-year-old, like, aunt who, like, like, no one can judge you because you're special snowflake. And, like, and, like, a picture of a Minion, like... It has nothing to do with the caption. Yeah, you know? I know. It's like, yeah, share this if you love Jesus. It's a minion card. <laughs> like, it's like a minion laughing. Yeah, it's or, like, yeah. what is this? What like, is you this don't card? like me, you can kiss my butt. And it's like a minion, like, you see its butt. Like, I don't know what people's obsession with the minions are, but... Um, <laughs> Despicable Me 3, I saw the trailer for it, and honestly, I think I kind of liked it up to a point. Uh, it, Trey Parker is playing the villain. Trey Parker is the voice of... Bunches of everyone's favorite characters from South Park. Um, Cartman, and he does Randy, and, like, he's he's one of the best uh, voice actors, I really think. So his character with the Michael Jackson soundtrack behind it, I was really feeling it. Maybe it was just Michael Jackson in the trailer, but I was feeling it. Yeah. And then there was some really weird thing where we saw Gru's butt in the thong, and I was like, okay, why is this happening now in this kid's movie? So that's my little problem with Despicable Me 3 a little bit. I, I was like, I really like most of it. But then some of the humor, I was like, I don't know why kids need to be knowing about thongs and weird stuff like that. This is a kid's movie at the end of the day. I don't think that that gross humor was, it was like, honestly, it was a little much. I was like. Yeah, it was a little, yeah. It was, was like, kind of like, it's kind of weird. That's just kind of weird. It's strange. I don't really, if, if I had kids, I wouldn't really want them laughing at that. I mean, butts are funny. I get it. Butts are really funny. I've laughed at many a butt. In my past, but, um, I don't know, I just, what? I just thought that, like, what, what? <laughs> the, the, time capsule, time capsule, but, you know, but, the thing, but, <laughs> time capsule, time, you, no, trigger, get, no, trigger, 
<laughs> but um, no, yeah, with Despicable Me 3, I think that it could be good, but there's some of that humor where they have like minions and thongs and like weird stuff that I'm like, why is this in this movie? I really hope that there's not a lot of that kind of weird potty humor, um, and I hope that it's a little bit closer to the other two movies. I thought those were pretty good. Uh, speaking of something that kids are going to be completely excited about and things that my nephews love, Spider-Man Homecoming's happening this summer. <laughs> yeah, speaking of your kids, yeah, not us. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the kid inside of the me, kid, John. The, the kid, kid inside of me. Yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming I'm really excited for. I can't wait to see uh, what Marvel can do with it. I yeah, guess, you know? I mean, because they Sony need some fucking help. <laughs> For sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I think, yeah, Michael Keaton is the vulture. What a fucking... Like, that's an inspired pick, I think. Inspired pick, for sure. I didn't like the trailer, though. The mm -hmm. last trailer, I think they gave way too much away. Uh, yeah, I wish they had um, kept a little more in the bag there. They're definitely trying to go like, Hey, come on, Iron Man's in this bitch! Yeah. I think that he won't be as, uh, in as much of it as we think. Yeah, I think we cool. saw most of it. <laughs> Which is terrible. Yeah, so I think that that's regrettable. We kind of know exactly where the story's going to go because of that trailer. Um, but I do like Tom Holland uh, yeah. from what we're seeing. Um, and I just switch <laughs> things. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, no, I, <laughs> I am really excited for uh, Spider Man Homecoming. <laughs> Derailed. Yeah, I think that Tom Holland is a really, really good Spider Man. I think that the new suit is. <sighs> Yeah, well, as awesome. the kids say, it's quite lit. Uh, or do they say dope or something? I don't know. Uh, ask the kids in the trap house and get back to me in the comments. But um, the the one, though, that I'm excited about after that, it's very kind of different than Spider-Man Homecoming. And most of these kids would not say it's lit or dope or anything like that. And they would not be cooking a dope in the crock pot. But um, a ghost story, <laughs> a ghost story looks really, really interesting. And we just watched the trailer for it recently, actually right before we did the uh, podcast, and that's another one where it's probably not going to make a lot of money. Oh, it's not going to make any money. But that's one of the things that I'm most excited about coming up in the summer. Yeah, it looks really, it just looks, it looks so different, so interesting, and I think it's going to have uh, just such a great uh, story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just going to have a well-written story. Uh, and I'm really excited. Casey Affleck is... Just fresh off his Oscar win mm -hmm. uh, for Manchester by the Sea, which was just a phenomenal movie from last yeah. year. Yeah, uh, underappreciated movie. I think that, uh, yeah, I think that's a movie that, uh, I get it, guys, it's a sad movie, but it is a really, really finely crafted film, and you cannot take anything away from that. So, I... And I mean, I'm, granted, I mean, we'll see. I don't, I don't even know who's attached to, who who wrote A Ghost Story. Um, uh, people, it's people not a... a New new person. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, no. I mean, just the the trailer really hooked me. Uh, I really. It's just interesting, you know. It just has that like the ghosts under the sheet, like mm -hmm. or you know, it. It's poetic, you know. I don't know. I mean, I mean yeah, I'm very intrigued. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be like it's not like uh, gonna be a scary story. I think it's gonna have some eeriness to it, but I think that it really is kind of the perspective of the lifespan of a ghost or or whatever that could even be and. And uh, kind of taking a look at it from their perspective. And I think that's going to be really interesting to see. And I think that Casey Affleck could be the guy that pulls something like that off. Um, but something that's a little more exciting, probably, for the mainstream audiences. And one that I think that we're also extremely excited about here. And definitely, they could make a lot of money this summer. War for the Planet of the Apes. Oh, War for the Planet of the Apes, absolutely. I mean, this is the director that's going to be helming the Batman Yes, uh, and out. honestly, you watch that trailer, like, after it was announced, I was in the theater, and that trailer came out, I was like, yep. this shit totally makes sense. Yep. You see those guys repelling on that waterfall, you see, like, the, like, Caesar, like, in the, the, with the muzzle flashes, you know, ah. I'm like, dude, replace that ape with Caesar, sorry, replace that ape with Batman. You got it. You got it. Yep. Exactly. Woody so. Harrelson, too, is such a, is such an amazing actor. Underappreciated actor. Underappreciated, Yes. I've uh, I I my my mother hates him because of Kingpin. She holds Kingpin against him for some reason, <laughs> and so I always am kind of like like I had, you do not know how the work I had to do to get her watch season one of True Detective, but I got it, and now she's like, okay, maybe he's not as bad as I thought. So I'm always I'm always in Woody Harrelson's corner. I think always. he is Thank really you. underappreciated. Yeah. I think he's really come into his own as he's gotten older though. He has gotten to I think to well, be yeah, a much he's, better actor. He, he's got a little more freedom to do some stuff. But yeah, no, True Detective's so good. Mm. Out of the furnace too, he's a sick 
Oh, totally, totally. Sick person in that movie, which, you know, not a lot of people saw that one, but... Mm-hmm. And uh, him and Seven Psychopaths, hilarious, can play that unhinged thing, it, funny, or he can play it seriously scary, like I said, on the first, it's a great example of him going really scary with that kind of character. I think he's a great character actor, and I've uh, really liked him for a long time, just seeing him as kind of the villain for this movie, Andy Serkis, um... Another guy I think is really underappreciated. He's oh, yeah. a great really actor. People yep. say that it's always just, you know, just because he's in motion capture, he's not an actor. That guy, watch him as Ulysses Claw, you watch him in uh, Einstein Eddington, you watch him in like uh, oh, yeah. if you watch, Broken Hair. He's, well, I mean, you watch him behind live the action. scenes. You watch him behind the scenes, though, too. Like, yeah. it's impressive. I actually teared yeah. up when they gave him that little thing at the Oscars two years ago. Yeah. They had, like, he came up to present an award or something like that, and it showed. Uh, it was just like a minute, like kind of intro to Andy mm. Circus when he came up on the stage, and actually, like, got teared. I, I was like, wow. I think he's a transcendent character actor, and I really love like what he's doing with War for the Planet of the Apes. He's taking a character that, like, usually CGS something like that, that does not work, but he knows. Uh, yeah, he's brought soul to it, like yeah, heart, like action, and he an barely actual speaks character to it. Yeah, you know, with just his expressions and then capturing his expressions. Uh, that way, it's I just... It's amazing. Well, to think what he's doing. He's playing a monkey. Like, I mean, that's craziness. <laughs> it is totally underappreciated, though. And I'm yeah, really, yeah. really excited for the... I really the wish that the trilogy. Academy would become a little more open-minded about some of those things. I think he got robbed a little bit when Lord of the Rings was around. Oh, yeah, because... Yeah, oh, yeah. He... Oh, yeah. And his, his, his performance was the thing that had some of the largest impact on pop culture... Uh, and, and it's remembered now. Like everybody remembers Gollum from those well, it was, films. It was also kind of like pioneered motion capture. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. Uh, it changed changed that game completely. But as did a lot of things in Lord of the Rings. I think it's one of those benchmark yeah franchises like Star Wars. It's you know it's the next one after that changed the game again. They created CGI fire. For the if first you have time. if you guys have never watched like behind the scenes of Andy Circus oh, like yeah. doing the performance. In the suit, watch it because it's amazing. It is amazing. John, I will raise you, guys. If you've never watched the extended editions of all the Lord of the Rings films, go out, get them, watch them, watch all of the bonus features yeah. of that because <laughs> it is actually some of the greatest bonus features I've ever seen on anything. They're all worth your time. They're so interesting, and it, honestly, it's one of the things that I've seen that really gave me a lot of perspective of how things on a film set really work. And uh, and I think that it's one of the most interesting. The commentaries on those are golden. They do tons of different ones with like the, the the directors and the producers and stuff and the writers. They do one with the cast that is hilarious. Um, definitely one to check out if you've never seen the extended editions of that. Um, talking about another person that's got one of those greatest of all time game changing franchises, the little franchise. I think you might have heard of the Dark Knight. Well. That man, Christopher Nolan, has another movie coming out uh, this year, Dunkirk. Yep. Uh, we got to see a little bit of uh, footage when we went to go see Rogue One uh, this last Christmas. Yeah, they had the seven minutes, uh, 70 millimeter mm-hmm. uh, footage of that. That was <clears throat> Seeing that IMAX, it sold me. I'm like, I'm coming back to this IMAX mm-hmm. theater to watch this. I was really impressed with the way that he was able to film the airplanes and that aerial battle. And it was in a ways that I had seen before, especially with planes like that, you could tell... We all know Christopher Nolan. That dude is filming on film. That dude is getting practical fucking nearly everything he can. And I, if there's anyone who put planes like that in the sky, I'm assuming it's that guy. So Tom Hardy. And oh. the, yeah, and as we all know, Tom Hardy's a real-life superhero. I caught the cat! You can just hear him <laughs> saying it. Yeah, Tom Hardy, man. Tom Hardy's like... For the win. I, honestly, if he was my spirit animal, I would be honored. And Killian Murphy, too, uh, in that... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another guy that's, that's really underrated. Underrated, yeah. Um, uh, but the movie just looks... It just looks fantastic. It just looks... It's going to be so good. I, was I like, know everyone's really scared, though, because it's PG-13. You know, it's it's going to be fine. I, I, I was hoping for an R-rated movie. Um, you know, I mean, Christopher Nolan's first couple movies were rated R. I was kind of hoping, hey, he's going to do a war movie. Let's... Come on, yeah. Let's show a little bit. Of, show a little bit more. But I'm fine. You know, a P, it's, come on. I mean, come on. PG-13. I mean, there's didn't not, there's not going to be any f bombs or like mm-hmm. guts hanging out of people. Oh well. PG-13 didn't bother me nearly as much as Harry Styles being. It bothers me a little bit. But we'll see. Maybe the and guy there's pans. A, there's out. a reason why he was cast. I think. I suppose. I suppose. And, Hopefully, and it's, it's not no, just it's because Christopher Nolan direction. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, what, the One Direction guys? And when I heard that, I was like, hmm, Nolan's getting cocky. Guy thinks he can do anything now. Yeah. That One Direction boy in this horror movie. <laughs> and watch America eat it up. <laughs> well, we'll know they'll eat anything. You hose at them. But anyway, uh, one of the ones that I'm excited after this that uh, I think looks really unique and hopefully is a return to form for this person. Uh, I'm talking about Luke Besson's Valyrian and the City of a Thousand Planets. Uh, the last trailer for that looked awesome. The visuals for that looked so striking, so interesting, so colorful, which is not something we see in a lot of movies anymore. So muted, so many of the tones. And I think that, okay, like I'm a huge Fifth Element fan. Okay, yeah, like I could watch awesome. that movie anytime. Like that's a movie I would just put in and like fall to sleep to and have wonderful dreams. Like I love that movie. And I think that this is Valerian, something that he has been so passionate about. He loved the comic books, his comic book property, um, and something that he grew up with and loved. So I think that it's for him, this is a huge passion project. Like doing the Fifth Element, he was in his mind going like, "I want, I really want Valerian." Valerian. Yeah. So he's getting to do this. <laughs> Dane DeHaan, like, is a guy that I think that he can carry movies. Like yep, yep, he can so carry movies as a lead. We saw it in A Cure for Wellness, which I think is one Under, of the better yeah. movies that has come out I think it's this underrated. last year and very underrated. People are sleeping on it. But, uh, and then Chronicle, too, I mean, from that debut there, he has kind of, I think, proven that he can be the centerpiece of a movie and carry a movie dramatically. <clears throat> Valerian, even though we had I, yeah, like I, Cara Delevingne in the cast, like Rihanna, who are <clears throat> really the best actors or actresses uh, out there. I think that he can elevate this movie. He can carry it, and he can carry them. I th- I think so too. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I don't think I don't think we need to be worried because he did Lucy last. I I really don't think that's. I just toss that aside. Yeah. I mean, well, really, you know, Luke Besson's a producer too. You know, he makes tons of movies. Technically, you know what I mean. Yeah. Taken is one of his. You know, <laughs> Taken, Taken yeah. franchise. He he produced those those movies. I I what I'm confident about is that it's kind of like in that mood of the Fifth Element. The Fifth Element's a classic movie. It's one of the just mm-hmm. one of the greatest movies from the '90s. I think. And it's just he, he's returning to that, and that's got me excited. Like that's got me excited. So I am looking forward to this. I think the last that, trailer was one of the best trailers I've watched in recent. Yeah, and it's I, one of the most original-looking things in a long time, and it honestly it reminds me of uh, something in the styling, especially with like the like the modern uh, style to it. It reminds me of something like Saga, which is a very uh, interesting and awesome uh, image comic. Um, that I think that I love that visual style come to life to see something like that now that we have the technology to do it. Um, now an, uh, uh, another one that I think that I'm also really excited for here. Um, Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron. Ooh, yeah. Um, you know, David Leach, uh, you know, co director of, of John Wick. Co of John Wick. And, uh, you know, John. <laughs> the guys from John Wick, basically, I think that John Wick will be looked at in this movie that, like, changed action cinema because it put David Leach and Chad Stalowski, like, into the limelight. In the yeah. limelight. Like, okay, here's your, like, great action directors. I think that anything from these two guys is worth putting on your radar. The, yeah, no, because absolutely. Because the, the action sequences, the choreography, it's going to be there. Which I didn't even know, but, like, Chad Stahelski was, uh, you know, he was on the set for the airplane, uh, airport sequence in uh, Civil War. Yeah. And he was the second assistant director. Both of them were. Both of The them second were. assistant directors, they filmed a lot of the airport sequence and, a lot, and some of the fight sequences inside of that. The Russo brothers don't really have that kind of experience in filming action sequences. So a lot of the time, second unit directors are guys like these uh, yeah. to come in and, and Choreography to, do, experts, to do that. Yeah. And, you know, when the final edit goes down to the floor, yeah, they're going to pick you know how that gets cut together, put together. But as far as picking up the raw footage... That was actually tasked with Chad Stolowski and uh, David Leach. Uh, these guys are the best in the business in action. But yeah, Tom, Atomic Blonde oh, looks like Char- it Charlize is, Theron is is such an awesome uh, actor. She's, she's so, my she's, top. She's yeah, she's so good, so talented. She's she's got so much range. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see, which we haven't really got to see much. And you're yet, you're what forgetting is, a. a a small but mighty Scottish man that is in that movie, James McAvoy, there you looks go. like he is, you know, being James fucking McAvoy, one of the greatest actors on the planet. Yeah, <laughs> in that movie. So I like those two together. Yep. Sign me up. I'm there. 
that well, kind it's, of it's action. Like, well, I mean, it's Shit. got it's got potential, I think, to to be just as good as John Wick, if not better, no. with that cast. It's hit. It's hit. Oh, uh, people have basically said it's John Wick without the dick, but like uh, it's oh, already hit the festival circles, and it's done really well. It's been a lot of these uh, festivals. It's been the best movie there, and I think that it's when it hits mainstream audiences are going to love it. We. Love John Wick. We love these two directors. I think people are really, really ready for more of these types you know, of action flicks. Like, I think it's so exciting right now because of these guys. Because I think we might see a renaissance in actual great action. It movies again. Are, oh man, it just makes me excited. Just we were talking about horror movies. Mm-hmm. Like this is like one of the best decades for horror in a long, you know. Yeah. And then like action movies are coming around too again. It's just it's exciting and and. You know, people talk about like superhero fatigue. It's like it's not fatigue if we're getting mm-hmm. all these other movies along yep. with it. I mean, like Mad Max Fury Road, kind of like launching this, and yeah, like John Wick. John Wick Two now was awesome this year. It, it's just it's exciting. It's really exciting to see some of these other genres uh, kind of come back. Why can't um, they announce like John Wick movies until I die? I think <laughs> now it's Transformers movies. Until yeah, I mean, they I die. probably could do it. John, I mean, Keanu Reeves could do another fifty years of action movies, right? Uh, like if they announced that, and I'm like laying in a hospital, seriously, I would go in peace. Like, <laughs> John- we're gonna keep making John Wick movies, and Keanu's still healthy. <laughs> he looks the same. He's just been exsanguinating blood from virgins or whatever he does. But like, <laughs> I'll be laying there and be like, "Well, the world is." As I left it, I just like, <laughs> I'll have gone in like complete peace. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yes. Atomic Blonde, I'm very excited for the next project from those guys. I mean, they're also doing Highland. David Leach is going to be doing Deadpool. Ooh, yes, too. Highlander. You know, Deadpool 2 is yeah. what David Leach is also doing besides Atomic Blonde. It's a little movie. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Which that got released for next summer, right? Yep. So pretty yep. excited about that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and and be excited about David Leach and Chad Stilowski taking over action films from here on out. Just get them and Gareth Evans, and I think that we're in go. a lot of really yeah. good. Gareth Evans man. is he's got coming out with his first English language uh, movie soon too. Yes, so. yes, and obviously we know his movies are some big projects, but it's always worth the wait. Um, a movie that may not be worth anybody's wait uh, here. We're getting to the end of our list finally, guys. I know it's a long episode, a lot of movies. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Emoji movie and how that looks like garbage. I'm all right. Um, not interested at all. Uh, you want to move on? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will definitely take that. Yeah. You know, the, uh, last, the last one really here at the end, at the very end of the summer, is one I think that a lot of people have been excited about for a long time. I know I'm long. personally excited about. We're getting The Dark Tower. Stephen King's The Dark Tower. We finally. still have not seen any footage from it, though, yet. I think we're supposed to be getting some really soon. I think this week. I think by the time we're posting this podcast, there may actually be Dark Tower footage. I was just hearing rumors about this. Okay. So, okay. maybe it is, maybe not. Tell me I'm a liar in the comments and how much you hate me if I'm wrong. But, uh... Um, yeah, I'm no, I am, I am excited for the Dark Tower. I'm just... It's... Because it's so late without anything yet, it's kind of got me a little worried. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Matthew McConaughey uh, playing a villain, uh, I can't wait. Playing a villain's an understatement, my man. Yeah, I... <laughs> He is playing the villain. Yeah. He is playing the man in black. He is playing Randall fucking Flag. Like, this is this is the villain in the Stephen King universe. Yeah, I hope he grasps it. I hope the story's coherent. I just hope it's... He's the thing I'm most excited again. about, man. Like, from what I know about the character, <clears throat> he is an inspired choice. I think that he is the choice to play this character, and I think that he's going to knock it out of the goddamn park. Yeah, Idris Elba too. Uh, it's exciting. Oh, yeah. He's such a great actor. Mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to think of that movie now. The the last time McConaughey played a straight up villain, um, William Friedkin's like Southern crazy movie. Oh, Killer Joe. Killer Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of a. Yeah, I, and you know, he's, a he started with a lot of that too before he became a heartthrob. I think there was a Texas Chainsaw sequel. Tell me in the comments. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he was. Texas no, Chainsaw he was like sequel. Texas Chainsaw Four or whatever. Something that like was. that. And then, uh, you know, he was in uh, Frailty too. Yep, Frailty. Which is, I think, I just watched that last year for the first time. That's a pretty decent mm-hmm. movie, actually. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm Bill excited. Paxton. Man, Bill, pa- yeah, Bill Paxton. Rest in peace. <clears throat> But yeah, I uh, I just I can't wait for the footage. 
Yeah, I'm really excited to see a trailer for it finally. I think that, you know, I'm a huge Stephen King fan, so I'm really excited to see them finally be able to take this story on. I think that's one we had to wait for because it's such a complicated thing to have to put together. And for it to get pulled off, I think that we're getting a good, um, we're getting a really good cast for these characters. And I think that it's really, I'm really excited for The Dark Tower. I hope that it's able to pull it off. But that has been a really long list of films, but, I mean, there's tons of movies that are coming out over this summer. I mean, that's pretty much through the end of August, guys. Or, sort of, about the beginning of August there. But, uh, there's, tell us in the comments, guys, which ones you're the most excited about. John, quick, bold prediction. Which movie makes the most money this summer? Oh, man. Uh, out of the ones we just listed, probably Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I would say, I I think uh, it's really hard to bet against that. If you if we go back to the, when the first one came out, I mean that was like in theaters from what August to like December. Yeah, uh, yeah up around us. So I don't I I, I don't know. I, it's gonna be tough to beat that one, but car you never know with Cars three. Yeah, you know, you know Cars you three know. is kind of a big one, I think. Uh, and Spider Man and Spider Man. I don't Homecoming. think that one will do a, a billion. Yeah, I think because we've gotten a lot of Spider-Man movies, I think that that's going to be really tough. But I think that I, my Iron pick... Iron Man's in it, though, too, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But honestly, my pick, I'd say, for what's going to probably be the most money is probably going to be Cars 3. The the power of the kids' movie, man. Uh, we saw it last year. If it was superheroes or talking animals, it was going to, you yeah, know what I mean? It was going to make money. So I think that, you know, I think always, you know, bet on Pixar and Marvel. So... I think that uh, Guardians and Cars 3 are probably the best guesses that we can probably achieve from the summer movie slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of elongated podcast, and I hope you guys didn't get too lost in all the movies that we talked about yeah, today. A lot. I was getting lost, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, much, so much good stuff coming out. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys are excited for this summer. I know that there's definitely a bunch of movies that I'm going to go see this summer. And uh, definitely one of the big ones. Wonder Woman! This has been Back to the Feature. I'm Giovanni Carlo. And I'm John Vandaloo. And we'll talk to you guys next time.